Well, once again, I still need to water this week. Um, it was snowing out earlier. The snow stopped. It didn't really stick because it's 35 out. Um, but we're at that beginning of that really extreme cold wave that's hitting the whole U.S. Um, anyway, what did I do in here? Um, I don't know. Oh, let me pop this. Come on. Bastiana by Campagnolata. Um, I don't know if last week I had um, already planted those gemme off. So let me show you. I put them in containers. There's one over here and two on top of the other shelf. But I poured coffee on those little baby Nepenthes. I still need to go take a closer look. Because they were really, really, really pale. I don't know what to do with them. So I moved them closer to a light and I poured coffee on them. Um, so there are a couple of new ones here that I moved to up here that have nothing sprouted in them yet. Those are the ones that I planted off last weekend after mixing up. Um, and then I moved a couple of them that were up here that had, uh, Nepenthe seedlings over to that light over there. After coffee with them. I don't know if this one always had no Nepenthe seedlings or maybe the moss choked it out, but fine. I really should cut back that moss. There's always stuff to do, right? Um, the gemme that I planted before are sprouting well. Um, like I said, I still need to water. Maybe I should pull the bisquamata out of everything, but I mean, this big container is too far gone, right? But maybe this one isn't. Um, I harvested my zucchini. I wanna say earlier in the week, I cooked with it. It was delicious as usual. I let it go maybe a little bit too long. I really should rip this out and plant some lettuce instead. But I just haven't. <laughs> There's so much to do. There's always so much to do. This thing looks so bad. The leaves are all torn up and ugly. So I guess it's just age on the plant and not necessarily outside conditions because conditions in this room are pretty great and it still kind of looks a little bit torn up. So anyway, these guys are looking a little bit better. Um, maybe just regular application of pesticide, even if you don't think you have bugs, does them a world of good. Come on, let go. I'm trying to tuck this Nepenthes vine behind that Monstera clump without getting the tendrils in the way. Oh, come on. Maybe, we'll call it good. Uh, a couple different kinds of ferns growing in this one. Uh, I bumped the heat up in the house for the next couple of days while it's supposed to get like in the teens overnight so I don't have pipes burst because that's the worst. this behind here. Let go, let go. So that it's not in the middle of the way, you know, so I don't actually accidentally catch it with my hair or clothes and rip the plants off and be upset. That pepper that I have downstairs still looks infested with uh, spider mite, so maybe I'm going to try the um, spinosad soap instead of just straight up neem. Just looking at these plants to see if they have any pests on them. I'm paranoid. I don't think they do. This is Simon. I'm glad he finally decided to start growing again instead of dying. It'd be sad if Simon died on me, my only named plant. Oh, he's growing over here too. Uh, this is Spectabilis, like straight up species Spectabilis. Uh, Bongzo, keep growing, please. 
Um, what else? What else? I turned this one a little bit more last week, right? So it's getting a little bit better light, hopefully. I have uppers on this guy, which is exciting. He's. It took me like at least 10 years of growing it to get a spike out of it. So, because I've been keeping it to be a pollen parent, right? And just nothing. I don't know if these actually set. If it, uh, maybe it'll bloom again. I don't know. I don't know what that growth point is. If it's gonna be seed pods or not. Maybe it's just gonna die back. Like this one. Man, my plants look so bad. Um, let's look outside. Snow has stopped. Oh, yesterday I was out in the garden right before the big freeze because it had rained, right? So it was nice and uh, like 40 degrees and wet everywhere. So I pulled a couple of those big clumps of grass that were in the middle of the strawberry. It's not paths anymore because it's just strawberry patches. So I pulled a couple of those big clumps out and I also um, dumped the sorrel that was still in the pot on the right hand side of the trellis inside of the garden and um, dug it actually into the ground right there because I wanted that second pot because I originally started with two of them, right? The white ones with the little knobbly bits at the top because I wanted both of them because I finally ordered some of that Eastern prickly pear. It's good down to zone two or four depending on who you ask. And I ordered two pads of them um, off of Etsy because it seems like that's the best place to order from rather than like Amazon or whatever. Um, so I ordered from Etsy. Hopefully they come in the next week or two. And then I have all those bags of sand that I bought earlier that I wasn't quite sure what to do with yet. Um, and so I can use those bags of sand in those big pots with those, um, I mean, essentially no pales, right? And then grow them in there forever. And when they start spreading, uh, put them in the gravel in front of my yard and have a nice big cactus patch, San Diego style. Is it bugs? It's not bugs. That's good. I'm afraid of bugs. Like plant bugs. else what else I don't think anything significant has happened in here otherwise um oh reapply poison in like a month per the directions to everybody's leaves I'm sad that I lost glabrata and anermis maybe I might buy another one of both this is still trying to bloom despite the fact that the tip keeps dying back. Oh, no wonder I have a sticky mess on the floor. Do you see all the dripping? Yuck. Uh, what else? Aspermeliad's still doing okay. The other ones are still doing okay too. This is still blooming. This one looks better than the one that's closer to the window, so I don't know what happened. Walking through here is hard. Oh, I lost another leaf on this guy. Two leaves is okay. Even zero leaves is okay if the vine itself looks okay. Um, oh, I had rearranged things here a little bit because this guy, the, what remains of my lithops was over here, right? So I shoved things around to get it arranged a little bit better. Um, and I took one of the one of the pots that looked kind of dead from this one and put it over here so that this one would be kind of full and receiving light on all sides. I really think that these were probably um, Rob Cantley eye crosses because I didn't have them labeled. I always, even with my vegetable gardening, I think oh, I'll remember what this was and then, you know, a year and a half later, oops. So, oops. <laughs> um, what else? Up here, same old, same old. I still have the pot over here that reminds me, the one that only has ferns coming out of it that reminds me that I lost a clipiata. I'm sad. 
This might be my original one. If it's clone you, if the tag says clone you, it's my original Clipiata, and then the other ones just don't survive as well. What else? Rob still hasn't bloomed. Uh, I think the uh, Passiflora is doing okay. The Nepenthes mass is doing okay. Uh, that's good and dead. That was that uh, Monstera Obliqua Peru. Um, Ovada is trying to take over everything, as you do. Um, this Nep right here that I'd swap places with this guy. Hopefully he does okay where he's sitting. Or she. Know how to get out of here, huh? Yeah. Let's try that. And this is Monstero Obliqua Bolivia. Yep. Try to get out of here without killing myself. I have a bunch of orchids that are gonna try to bloom downstairs. They're growing into the blinds. For better or worse, I keep rearranging them um, so they can actually grow. And that uh, might be it for the week. Okay, till next time.